Hello everyone, it's Fine and Steady, and today we're going to talk about how Uncle Sam, the USA, is actually incentivizing companies to buy Bitcoin. This is huge. This is what nobody is talking about. This is how Michael Saylor and Elon Musk are convincing everybody else to slowly buy Bitcoin. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, where do we begin? We begin in the SEC filing for Tesla for this quarter. So over here, they talked about they're buying Bitcoin. But most importantly, right here, digital assets are currently considered indefinite lived intangible assets under applicable accounting rules. What on earth does that mean? Well, it means that Bitcoin has very specific accounting situations attached to it, which are extremely beneficial to companies. And let me get into this and explain it. The benefit of being an what whatever this asset is called is that you have the benefits of being an asset as well as income at the same time. So when you hold, for example, I don't know, let's say you buy a house and your house drops in value, God forbid, like 50%, right? You can't go on your income sheet and write like, oh, I lost like 50% of my house's value and like now I'm not going to pay tax on my regular income. Can't do that. On the flip side, when you gain income from your job, you have to pay the tax on it every year, right? You don't pay tax on it only when you decide to spend the money. You pay tax on the basis of it coming in. So imagine if you can have an asset where, first of all, you can decide when you want to pay tax on it, on the income from it. And second of all, you can declare the expenses from it anytime it decreases in value. Well, with Bitcoin and digital assets, companies can. So let me explain to you exactly how that works. What do we need to know? We need to know that Bitcoin is classified as an indefinite lift intangible asset. A lot of big words here. This gives it a special status according to the US GAAP. GAAP means General Accounting Principles. And one must account for it based on indefinite life impairment rules. What do these all mean? Well, we're just going to go through the different scenarios and what happens in the different scenarios. So we start with the 1.5 billion US dollar purchase of Bitcoin that Tesla made. So here we have scenario one. And let's say the Bitcoin drops in value to 1.2 billion US dollars. What happens then on their income and expenses balance sheet? Well, what happens then is that there was a 300 million loss, right? 1.5 billion to 1.2 billion, that's a 300 million loss. So in the accounting principles, we're going to write minus 300 and I'll put an M for million. And let's just say uh, every quarter Tesla is making 400 million, right? So in total, what they would actually put as their earnings for this quarter would be 100 million. That means 300 million of their income, right? They made 400 million because of this special thing. They were able to deduct 300 million as a tax deductible uh, expense, right? And now they only have to pay taxes on 100 million income. So I'm going to write here taxable. That's not so easy to write. Bear with me. Taxable. All right. I'm doing that with my mouse. I'm pretty impressed. So that's scenario one. Now we go to scenario two where the value goes back up to what they bought it for, which is 1.5 billion US dollars, right? So now you reverse this special expense that they had here, you reverse it and you have to declare it as income. So if they make every quarter, let me find the brush here. Well, that's something right. Okay, here, let's say they make every quarter uh, 400 million, right? And then on top of that, because of this gain that they had here, right? This is a positive gain. They gate as well 300 million. So you write here 300 million. And we're just going to put a big fat zero for expenses because there's nothing special here. And this means in this quarter, they would then declare 700 million in profits as opposed to the previous quarter where they declared 100 million. Okay. Bear with me because this next part is where it gets interesting. So here they reverse their losses from here. They have to pay income on it, right? Because here they deducted income, uh, income tax. Here they pay the income tax that they deducted earlier. So that's all fair. But this next part is where it becomes special. All right, guys. Now this is where it gets interesting. So now this is their initial purchase price, 1.5 billion. And it goes all the way up 
to 3 billion US dollars, right? So their Bitcoin appreciated in value to 3 billion US dollars. Now, how much do you think they're gonna write in income, right? Let me grab the brush here again. So as always, every quarter, they're just gonna consistently make 400 million from regular stuff. Now, how much do you think they're going to write down for this 1.5 to $3 billion gain? Well, I'm going to surprise you. They're going to write down exactly $0 in income for this gain. And let's say again, their expenses are zero. So in this quarter where their Bitcoin increased in US dollar value from 1.5 billion to 3 billion, they are only, 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 only going to capture as income on the statement, $400 million of taxable income, right? Let me just finish here so it's not confusing. Taxable income, whereas this is 1,500 million, right? 1.5 billion, right? So, so that's 1.5, let me write it this way, 1.5 million in gains that they're just not having to write down. That's a lot of tax saved. Now you're going to ask me, what do you mean? But they made a bunch of money. How come they're not writing it down here? Well, when your gains on the asset go above the initial purchase price, this is no longer classified as an income. This is now classified as an asset, as an asset. And on assets, you only pay tax in the moment that you sell them. So until you sell them, you're not paying any of the captured gains here of this 1.5 billion US dollars in gains. So on the moment that they sell it, you're going to see here income 1.5 billion, right? That's going to be a huge quarter. But if they never sell them, they don't have to pay the taxes on it. So if you look here in the first, first situation, you had expenses, right? You had to lower your taxable income and you got a write-off for that. So your stock price is going to probably tank. It's going to plummet as everyone says, hey, what happened here? They had a super low profit quarter. There must be something wrong with the business. I'm freaking out. I'm selling off. And this is a moment to buy the stock for cheap. Then Bitcoin goes up in price. You have a hugely successful quarter. Everyone is like, hey, the business is doing great. The business is doing so wonderful. I'm going to buy, 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 buy. And everyone who is holding the stock gets a huge reward as the stock price increases. Then Bitcoin itself goes up in value further than the impair than the initial purchase price. And those gains are then listed under the asset aspect on which you only have to declare income when you sell and not every quarter. So what does this mean in this situation? Well, in this situation, the company will show their regular 400 millions in taxable income. And that's it. It's not going to show anywhere this 1.5 billion dollars in gains. So you have very, very different looking balance sheets, even though the company made 400 million in every single quarter. You have a difference of 100 million here when you capture the losses, 700 million here when you uncapture the losses, right? You recover the losses and up to what you recovered, you go back up. So here, huge sell off, no difference in company fundamentals. Here, huge buying, no difference in company fundamentals. Here, nothing noteworthy, but huge increase in the, in the company's value on the asset sheet. All three scenarios are positive for the companies. This is what they haven't told you yet about why all the companies are being incentivized to buy Bitcoin, okay? This is the secret you have to know. This is something to pay attention to as more and more companies buy this asset, it's going to have huge implications for their balance sheet, especially in the US. I don't know about other countries, how other countries are handling it, but for the US, this is how it's gonna work. This is very important news, and this is the big secret that nobody is telling you about. If they lose money on Bitcoin, they still win because they can deduct that and, and write off taxes based on that. If they go back up to their initial purchase price, they declare it as income, and that becomes a mega, mega quarter for them. If 
the Bitcoin gains in value above their initial purchase price, well, there's going to be no noticeable difference on their balance sheet when you look at the at the income and the expenses, right? It's just going to be a regular quarter. However, when you look at their assets, you're going to see a jump of $1.5 billion. Guys, all three scenarios are beneficial for companies. This is what Michael Saylor explained to Elon Musk, and this is why Tesla bought Bitcoin. This is now what Michael Saylor is explaining to thousands of executives all over the US from Fortune 500 companies. Put two and two together and please like and subscribe because nobody else is coming to you with this content besides maybe meet Kevin and in that case subscribe to him too. Guys, if you appreciate this information, this deep dive into the most basic things that you need to know as well this is going to be important in valuing companies going forward then please subscribe like share this with anyone who needs to know this information thank you guys for watching bye bye peace quick shout out to two people first mm crypto for linking me to this filing and the second meet kevin for actually explaining this whole concept and we're gonna go straight into the sec